Hello, we are live today with God Encounters and Women Making a Difference. So um, let me introduce everybody real quick. We've got Lynn Hare, who is an award-winning author of a book titled The Quest for Self-Forgiveness. She's also a certified teacher, trainer, life coach, and intercessor. And I've been very um, grateful for her prayers, let me tell you. So thank you, Lynn, that you could join us today. I'm thrilled to have you. Thank we you, Cheryl. It's good to be here. Yes. We also have Deneen Butler, who's the senior associate leader, leader I can't talk, <laughs> worship leader at the father, Father's House. She also is a singer, songwriter, and has albums out. Her and her husband are very anointed. So grateful to have you on board today, Deneen. Thank you. Good to be here. Yes. And we have Trista Williams of God is Good All the Time with Isaac TV and Eternal Life TV. And so thank you for joining us today, Trista. Thanks. Happy to join you guys. Yes. So we're excited. So um, if you have questions, hopefully we can get to them today. We are just kind of going to um, spark off each other as Lynn had picked up in the spirit. Um, we're going to talk about some different attributes of God. There are so many, and we would go for hours and probably days if we really talked about all the things about God we could. But um, I want to start with a slide that I want to show you that we have some written down on. So a few are Adonai, El Shaddai, El Elyon, didn't say that right, Yahweh, Elohim, El Olim, Elroy, El Gibber, Kana, I think if I'm saying that right, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rihi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Shama, and Jehovah Me'ed Me Kedeshim. I didn't say that right. I'm sorry. <laughs> And one other, God is multifaceted. So this is just so fun. I'm, I'm getting energized even just talking about it because he's so good. There's so many things to him, but he's infinite, immutable. He never changes. Omnipotent, powerful, omniscient. He's all-knowing, omnipresent. He can be everywhere at once. He's a spirit, invisible, Wise, and these are just a few traits, but wise, faithful, our healer, good, kind, compassionate, just, merciful, gracious. He loves with an unconditional love. He's a creator, glorious, righteous. He's right standing and cannot sin. Provider, prince of peace, victorious, Defender, Redeemer, and Lion of the Tribe of Judah. Mm. And I want to start out with that one, and then I'm going to let the girls just roll here. So um, for me, I know when I, um, real quick, when I start out leading worship, I want to declare the goodness of God every time. He is good, and I like to declare that up front. But for me, my access to God many, many times has been He's my defender. How he comes to me as the defender is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And time after time after time, um, when fear would try to attack me and scare me and, and just, you know, fear can try to immobilize you. Amen. But we don't have to allow that. So he would show up literally. I would see the lion and sometimes roaring, and I just had this peace like, wow, he is watching over me. He's my defender. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And uh, a little cool fact that I found out today that I didn't know um, that Deneen shared is Genesis chapter 49, verses 9 and 10 says, Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down. He lies down as a lion. Who dares rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, 
nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And to him shall be the obedience of all peoples. And then the other one that a lot of us know is Revelation 5.5. 5. And one of the elders said to me, stop weeping, for behold, the lion that is the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome so as to open the book and its seven seals. Amen. He's an overcomer and he fights for us. All right, ladies, I'm going to let you loose. Who wants to go next? I just want to add to that. I love every time I talk to you, Cheryl, you're always talking about the lion of Judah and the, the courage of that lion is inside of us because we're sealed with the redemption of the Holy Spirit. And so if there's times where we're feeling intimidated or scared or like inadequate, we don't have to rely on our own courage. He lives inside of us and it's his courage that's coming out. And yes. just as you were sharing that, I was hearing the Holy Spirit has a prophetic word for some people who are watching. And here's the word. The Lion of Judah runs swiftly beside you. The Lion of Judah runs swiftly beside you. His roar inside of you is just keeping tempo with, with what you're running. And you're running in such a way as to catch the prize. And I love the Lion of Judah in you. There's no reason to be scared or even to, to weep, right? So don't weep. The Lion of Judah, the Root of David, has triumphed. God is victorious, and we're right. victorious in him. And um, I was just thinking in my own personal life, um, I have some uh, relatives in my family that are a little bit challenging for me to hang around with, and I'm having a family reunion coming up at the end of this month. And I'm feeling a little bit intimidated by that process because some of them are freedom challenged in some areas <laughs> and so for me it's like ah a little bit of anxiety to face that event but the holy spirit's telling me i can just show up and he'll show up because like we're, we're like it's a gig that we do together and so i don't have to think about my own self being brave in that event in the reunion but i can think about his and then i can just uh relax and let him take over. And that's going to be, a, it's going to be a good event because it's going to have his courage in it. Yes. Real quick. Um, I literally had that vision when my mother passed. Mm -hmm. um, it was a little, you know, tough time. And the Lord showed me, I was driving down the road. The Lord showed me this vision of that lion running swiftly beside me. I'm like, wow. Again, it just gives me that strength that I need to know he is with me every mm -hmm. single day. So, could you feel like the rush of the wind in his mane? I mean, could you like <laughs> feel that rush? <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> you know, I think that um, what's really cool is that the line of the tribe of Judah, there's so much attached to that. There's, there's not, it's not just singular um, in, in um, who he is as, as his majesty. Cause I feel like that, you know, the lion in itself portrays the part of the majesty and the strength of who God is. But the other thing is that in that roar, there's a lot that goes on in the roar. And, um, you know, Psalms 29 talks about what the voice of the Lord does, what the roar of the Lord does, how it breaks chains, how it, how it shatters the, the schemes of the enemy, how it lays waste the enemies of God, how it reveals and uncovers things that have been hidden, um, and how, um, uh, how it accomplishes its purpose. It sends out a call. It sends out a, um, a call to arms. Uh, and also it's a, if you think about a lion and a lion's pride, it's actually what a lion's pride being the peop, the, the lions associated with the, the king lion, um, is that the lion will roar and the pride or the people will roar back in response. And every time that there's a roar that comes out from the lion of Judah, there's a roar of the response of the people that echoes in the earth. And those things combined bring actually what's happening in heaven onto the earth. Um, and also it's really interesting to me that it's tied, Cheryl, with that verse that you shared. Um, it's tied to Judah as the scepter tribe. The scepter tribe, what that means is it's the ruling tribe. Judah was the royal tribe, the tribe that that actually led um, Israel, the tribe that all the kings came from. So if you think about that, the reason it identifies with Judah, it's, it's the royal tribe. When the decrees of the Lord are, are given, something has to happen in the earth. There's an authority 
and a power that's released that. And, and it's tied to the number four, you know, Judah was the, the fourth yeah. tribe of Israel. And if you look at the number four, there's so much in that, but in the creation story, the number four deals with times and seasons. The number four deals with um, the access to, um, to moving into new spaces with the Lord, new, new faith to faith, glory to glory, strength to strength. It's, it's tied with the times and the seasons and the, the way that time moves. And so, um, you know, you have authority in times and seasons and it's tied to praise because Judah means praise. So our praise, when our roar on the earth echoes what's happening in the heavenly places, moves and changes the times and the seasons to align with the voice of the Lord and gives us access into the royal throne room of God. You really put it all together. It's actually quite tremendous what's <laughs> available to us just in that one little tidbit. Wow, wow, wow. I love it. It's like, I'm like electrified right now. I'm like, Whoa! <laughs> it's almost too much, too much energy. It's so exciting. Wow. I love it. Yeah. yeah I wanted to share some, I'm that's sorry. Why you have the praise singers going before the, in warfare in battle. Why, why well, they're lifting up the sound of heaven yes. ahead. Yes. And that's why that could fell Jericho. That's why all of those things can happen because it deals with the power and the authority of God. Wow. Yes. I love it. And I didn't know, but you know, four is my number. And like I said, all I knew about it was the rain, R-E-I-G-N. Yeah. But hear all of this, I'm like, no wonder I see fours all the time. No wonder I love that number. <laughs> yeah. I want to do a whole I want to do a whole broadcast on fours. And I want to unpack the whole thing you said, Deneen. You know, Cheryl, you started talking about God as your defender, and you're we were just talking about the sound and the resonant, the resonant frequency of the worship. Well, um, a lot of things that happen in fear where we need that courage from the Lion of Judah is when things are really chaotic and with the global crisis that's going on now, with the interracial tension that's being displaced with the interracial reconciliation. I had heard this before, is that when you think about gratitude or praise or write about it or speak it out or sing it out, gratitude and thankfulness, that actually shifts your heart rhythm from chaotic to wow. smooth and rhythmic like ocean waves. Literally, physically, as you're expressing that gratitude and praise, you're calming down your body and your emotions so that you can have the transcendent peace of God's heart and God's mind in yours. That's so good. Well, yeah. just being quiet, what do you got to say? <laughs> oh, well, just processing everything that you were sharing. And that's why I was taking a moment. Uh, but you know, that song is my daughter's favorite song. I, you could go on my Facebook and you'll see it. We posted a fun little song. Uh, God's, you know, it's roaring like a lion. Yes. Uh, you know, one of the things I was also thinking that really stuck out to me is the attribute, the holiness, you know, and that really ties into, you know, Jesus and, you know, us being able to have that redemption through, Jesus. And that's my comfort. That's, that's like, it helps me be able to be in a place of thanks and worship, because I know that that's my security, uh, that he made a way, you know, and it, it gives me joy knowing that I can praise my heavenly father. And I can know that he will always take care of me. And I can know that, you know, in his word, he says that he's so faithful and all his promises. I could know that I can stand on that. And so, you know, he's a father that loves us and, and he's so faithful, like I said. So uh, I'm just very, very thankful that also that's a source that we can draw from, I mean, to help us when it comes to ministering to people, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and the whole spirit is very much a part of that, of course. So, yeah. <laughs> well, when I think of holiness also, I think of the presence of God, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you feel holiness, you feel the presence of God mm -hmm. and the righteousness of God. I mean, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's kind of where I go when I think about that, but yeah. Hey, uh, Trista, you were talking about the holiness, and then even as you were just talking about that, Cheryl, about being connected with God in, that, in his presence, with such a large family, and I think of being holy as being set apart unto the Lord, 
how were you able to tap into that holiness with all the goings on of a large family? Well, I think that you definitely have to discern, you know, your children's needs. The Lord knows that your family is what he's giving you to steward. And so there's balance, of course, and, and getting that personal time, you know, uh, when things are quiet, like when they are in bed, you know, uh, it could be early in the morning, it could be in the middle of the day, it could be in the evening, it's just finding that balance and that time and just discerning and knowing that you need that personal devotion with the Lord, you know, so and I feel it all day long, you know, as I'm continually in thanks and I'm in praise, it's like there is a complete peace over me as I'm doing things, even if it feels like there's a lot of noise, you know. So I enjoy the fact that I can be home and spend time with the kids. And sometimes they don't always in, like understand when I'm on here uh, doing this. But what matters is that they're always getting their needs met. And then they can be in that security of knowing that we love them. And they also understand uh, that people need Jesus and they understand that it's important for us to be engaged with other people and be ministering as we continue to raise them up and minister to them. So. That's so beautiful. Really balance. beautiful. Yeah. You really balance your, your family's needs really well, Trista. So. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, and I see, I, you know, in adding to the holiness, I, I see holiness, not just being, um, not just being set apart in the sense like where we, you know, we're deliberate with time. I think that's important, but I, I see it as being a, an item of clothing, so to speak, of the Lord's character and nature in our life, really putting on Jesus. I think holiness comes from uh, the righteousness of God. It comes from those things. And I, and in a practical sense, you know, there's that verse in, uh, I, I forget the, um, the address right now, but where Jesus like be holy as I am holy. And, you know, I can just see the disciples going, what does that mean? You know, how are we, how can we be holy as you are holy? But I think it's this idea of wearing, wearing the righteousness of the Lord. When we, when we have uh, his righteousness on their robes of righteousness, they're, they're being clothed in his nature in his beauty in his a majesty and when we are clothed in those things the things of the world and the the things of the old nature have died they're not present and i think that you know when we when we when we talk about god's holiness and needing more of his holiness and make me holy as you holy you know that when a revival comes that's a lot of times the the awakening prayer of the bride is you know make make me holy as you are holy you know mm. trans my heart and really what we're saying is let so much of you fill me that there's nothing that's not of you in me left you know what I mean yeah. um and and I think that we can go about our day and we can have the we're separated in a way we're separated unto Christ but we're not separate from the world we live in we're right. holy does that make sense like there's this beautiful there's this beautiful display of the holiness of God that happens through a life that's surrendered to him. Um, and I think if our, like what you were talking about with your kids, taking care of your kids, we can be holy in those moments and emanate the holiness of God, taking care of our kids because our heart posture is surrendered to the Lord in those moments, yet we're still working in our daily day you know what I mean and it comes out into our kids and it comes out as a demonstration and as a manifestation of God in us in our day and I think sometimes people separate it's really easy to um, and we're going to talk about all these things and I think it's really easy to compartmentalize one or two things and pull them out of the whole of who God is and really forget that they're connected to the whole of his nature you know what i'm saying so we can pull out these facets and talk about them but they're all rooted and anchored in the righteousness and the love and and the um the justice of of the lord all of it's rooted in who he is so mm -hmm. if we're hearing him we're going to be able to manifest that do you know what i mean yes yeah. and uh, denise beard actually answered for us on here and she said it's first peter 1 15 but just as he who called you is holy, 
so be holy in all you do. And verse 16 is, for it is written, be holy because I am holy. So, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Denise. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I love it because it's like none of the disciples were perfect. You can see the Lord really <clears throat> work in their lives as they spent time with the Lord. And we get the blessing of the Holy Spirit. So we can still have that same power available to us, you know, so. Yes, amen. Well, another, another attribute that I would like to bring up is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. And mm -hmm. I'm sure I'll have something you can share on this, but I know in my own life, um, in years past, this was years ago when it was difficult to tithe, but I made it a rule that the tithe came out before everything else. And you know what? Somehow amazingly, and believe me, girls, I had it down to the penny in my <laughs> bank account, you know, and I would watch and I'm like, how can this be? There would always be more money in there because I'm telling you, I was very, very meticulous. There would always be more money in there at the end of the month then should have been there. And I'm like, how did this happen? There's been no, you know, um, deposits that I can see here, but somehow there's more money in there than I put in there myself. God is faithful. That's another thing. I, I'm going to tie in. God is faithful. Um, but Jehovah Jireh, he has always taken care of my needs. Amen. Amen. Who wants to add to that one? I'm sure you all have stories. <laughs> I definitely agree with you. You know, it's, it's when you're faithful and you're putting your seeds where it needs to go, uh, you're honoring the Lord. It's like all things work out for you. I, I mean, sometimes it doesn't make sense, how, you know, when I do specific things and then I see, oh my goodness, like I should be under, but I have overflowing. And it's a blessing because then you can also, as you're overflowing, always be able to give towards others, yes. you know, others out of that. He says that he's the God of abundance. Yes. You know? He comes to still kill and destroy, but God comes to give life and, and also abundantly more. And I love that. He, he talks about what the envy does and then he, He's like, okay, but I do this, you know, he ends it with his note and his goodness and his faithfulness towards us. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's in Malachi where it talks about how you can't outgive him. Right. And it's the one time he challenges you. Right. Yes. To him, right. To see. And there are a lot of people who live by biblical principles with their finances and, and they don't even really know the Lord, but one of the reasons why they're so blessed and they can give uh, is because they're applying a biblical principle that God had. And yeah. it's like when you're planting something in the ground and you're watering it and it's on good soil, you know, you know, you're going to have a harvest out of that, you know? So. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Malachi three ten says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Now, I add to this, my daughter um, was going through some very, is, is going through some challenging times, but here's how good God is and faithful as, as a provider. So he, she actually is a teacher of a charter school, and they are allowing her to work every day in the summer to still make money. So that's number one. Number two, you know, her, her husband had some physical hits happen, and so he's not working right now. Well, they went to church one morning, and a lady hands an envelope, and she didn't even look to see what was in the envelope until she gets home, and there's over $200 in there for them to help them with bills. Um, another time they went, they were camping and, you know, the, you know how kids can be, you know, she's got a 15 year old and an eight year old. And she's like, if you guys be good, I'll buy you milkshakes and we're done camping, you know? So they go to this restaurant and, um, when they get in there to pay, this man says, no, wait, 
I want to do this for James, you know, that's her husband. So she, he paid for all the milkshake. So I'm saying God provides in ways that you don't even expect mm -hmm. surprises along the way, but he's a good God. He's faithful and he's just, and yes, he takes care of our needs. Amen. Yeah. I wanted to add to that. Like, um, I think that people get it stuck in a rut thinking that provision is only monetary and actually Je Jehovah Jireh, that is a, the, an idea of completeness. That's an idea of, of provision that brings wholeness and, um, mm -hmm. it uses people, it uses resources, it uses land, it uses divine appointments. It uses things that we can't even fathom. God orchestrates to provide for his children. And it reminds me too, of like where Jesus was talking about you know, this, even the sparrows, God closed the, God closed them. He provides for them. They're not even, you know, human beings. They're not even, they're not even needing, you know, created like we are to be mm -hmm. uh, with the Lord, like we are. And he, he cares about even those small things and plans their trajectory, knows their lifespan and, and, and knows the hairs on our head and knows all these things about us. And the whole idea should bring such a comfort to us that even if we're struggling, that God is actually providing a way that there is a way he's a way maker he's a Jehovah Jireh he's he's bringing forth the way because he is the way he is the truth and he is the life so all of those things tie into him in such a in such a full way and I think sometimes we sell ourselves short um in in Christendom by thinking that his provision only comes in in money I I found his provision in relationships I've prayed in <laughs> best friends. I found, I found his religion or his religion, his provision in um, the richness of the people around me in, in the body of Christ that he's placed me in or, or mothers and fathers, um, you know, just different things like that. And I think that God wants to expand our, our understanding of, of him, not to just be stuck in that box. And I actually feel it. It's is this is a prophetic word for somebody right now in your life. You, you've been you've been holding God hostage to this one way that his promise should look in your life. And I just hear the Lord saying, let it go and give it to me because it's so much bigger than what you can think right now. He wants to be Jehovah Jireh to you in a way that you've never experienced. He wants your mind to actually be renewed in the spirit of his thinking. Uh, his thinking is above our thinking. His thinking, it has no limits to it. And so I just uh, released that word of encouragement over those of you watching, if that's you, that God wants you to know first that he sees you, secondly, that he loves you, and thirdly, that he has provided for you. And if you will trust him, if you will actually seek him with your whole heart, you're going to find doors open to you and things that will present itself that will actually redeem time where you have felt you've been robbed by the enemy. And so I just decree that over you in Jesus name. Amen. That's a good word. <laughs> Somebody needs to grab that. <laughs> you know what? Um, I just love what you were just saying, Deneen, and I just love the connectedness of what you were talking about, the spirit of abundance. And you're right. Sometimes that comes in terms of financial blessing, but other times it's relationships. And when you're talking about um, perceiving, it's like, I forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I give water in the desert and cool streams in the wasteland to provide a drink for my people, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. So I was thinking about this new thing that's springing up is a spirit of abundance. And that's because what you're talking about, Cheryl, knowing his attributes, knowing him and that relationship you have with him. And I just wanted to share a little bit about business. And I have a friend who's getting ready to launch a new business in Colorado. And before they even open the doors, before even day one of launch, they're having meetings with the employees, with the staff that are putting into place like this code of law. You know, we believe in integrity. We believe in all shall prosper. We believe in a place of being, of being honest. And they're just listing those virtues, listing the things that are biblical. That's the foundation before the very first day begins of that business. And then um, when we build things on a strong foundation, when we build things on the foundation of things that are the virtues and we come and we express those, the Holy Spirit is going to show up in his timing and God's timing, like his will is good yeah. and pleasing yeah. and perfect. And 
I want to double back a little bit about the money part, because once you've laid a foundation, your business is going to prosper when you apply biblical principles. And just yeah. about a year ago, the Holy Spirit gave me this. And this is a prophetic word for anyone. If you feel led to appropriate this, take it if it's yours. And I just saw Jesus speaking and giving the Sermon on the Mount. And as he's speaking and sharing what God, people are going to have as they step forward into his characteristics and, uh, and to what he's calling them to be, I see an image of these little Jewish kids bouncing these little super balls. <laughs> and they're going like, boing, get a boing, get a boing, <laughs> right? And what's happening is these children have business prowess from when they're short apostles and prophets. These children have business prowess from the time they're young, they're like talented and gifted kids. And that bouncing ball is a down, bouncing decimal point, 10x, mm. 100x, 1000x. When you're walking out of that place, we've been talking about a courage, his courage inside of you, and that place of holiness and abundance that comes in a relationship with the living God. He's going to provide increase to your business. And that comes back to prayer. It comes back to praying into God, into his presence. And I take one day out each day. I call it Wordless Wednesday. I take a prime time day once a week just to spend time with him. And I pray. I spend that time listening for his voice, looking for his visions. I can't cheat that time. It belongs to him. And when that happens, I'm literally making room for the increase. So I'm saying I'm expecting my business and my husband's business. He has a software development business. I'm a coach. I have a class called Team Possible that meets Thursday mornings. And we're calling forward possibilities, activating possibilities with hope-filled expectation. And I'm expecting as people are coming to know the person of Jesus Christ and his empowerment and their purposes in him and possibilities that this business, because it's founded on his principles, it's founded on him, that there's going to be a multiplying effect. And that business is going to open wide opportunities based on him because I'm making room for the increase. I'm literally taking time just to open up my heart and my mind and my wisdom for him. And when I make room for the increase, he comes. Wow. I, can I? Yeah. You know, about relationships and then obviously, you know, out of that, the overflowing of God being able to bless you. You know, Jehovah Jireh, if you uh, go back in Genesis, you'll find that the place that uh, Abraham was asked to offer uh, Isaac, uh, that I mean, that was the place where God met him and said, I want you to offer up Isaac as a sacrifice. And you think about just that obedience, him recognizing, you know, the voice of God and then uh, moving in that direction. And, and it was accounted to him by his faith, of course. Uh, you know, he was stopped and the Lord ended up finding, I mean, God ended up finding another way. And that's where, of course, Jesus came about where he had provided uh, but he made a promise and he said that he'd be a father of many nations and he, he would bless him and it, it would be through his family line, the inheritance. And, and it's just really beautiful. Like when you talk about God providing and, and that name Jehovah Jireh, you know, we can have a security with that because of his faithfulness of what he's shown us. And he's just a good God. And I thought that was really beautiful because it really started out with Abraham, you know, when God made that promise to him. So, yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. A lot of these that start out with Jehovah and then the different names of God there, a lot of them are based in Genesis, I noticed. So um, definitely. Yeah. All right. I have a favorite in there. A couple. Yes. There. Let's one it. of mine is El Elyon, which is, I think the third one you had on different names and characteristics that, that actually means the strongest of the strong. Mm. And, um, I had a season in my life where I asked the Lord, who do you want to be to me in this season? And he told me that name. I had to go look it up. He told me that without me having known what it was. Um, he said, I want to be El Elyon. 
And so, and from then, of course, I mean, when you think about what that means, that means obviously, oh, yay, we're going to have some warfare in your life. <laughs> but um, I, in the, in that training season, I really learned it became very solidified to me that me plus God equaled the majority, that he was the strongest of the strong. And it didn't matter what uh, the giant that faced me looked like. It didn't matter what the circumstance that faced me looked like. It didn't matter um, how much I had in my own personal tank. What mattered is that I showed up and God showed up. And when God showed up, that was it. And that's, that, that meant that that's the fight's over and, you know, the enemy can bring himself. And I love what Graham Cook says, what, that's all you got. You got to go get some more guys. Cause you know, I got my guy here. I got, I've got El Elion here, you know, he's going to like totally trample you. So let's like make it a good trouncing instead of like, you know, something small. But um, for me in my life, he's proved to be the strongest of the strong. He's proved himself to be my champion. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of times people struggle with the idea that the battle is the Lord's um, and not understanding what their participation is in that. And I think we learned that actually our participation is to show up and he comes and shows off. That's our participation to believe that when we show up, he's going to come and he's going to show off and he's going to do his thing and his power is going to be demonstrated. And then understanding that actually when we're battling, it's not by our own might, it's not by our power, but it's by the spirit of God that actually the victory comes because it's enforcing what Jesus already paid for. And I think that there's a beautiful um, connection in, in understanding what Jesus did on the cross with our positioning in how we fight the battles and understanding what our role is in that and coming up with showing up with our faith and our decrees and declarations that agree with who God is, that remind us of who God is. I mean, David's a great example of that in his life. He would strengthen himself in the Lord, but reminding him of all the things that God did, of God's faithfulness, of the names of God to him, who God was to him. And then yeah. when he showed up, God would show up and do something totally, completely, amazingly new. And then there was another, another facet of God's, God's character given to him for the next battles, for the, for the next war that he could actually experience. It's an actual knowing. I, the, the Hebrew word would be yada. It's like that intimate knowing of God as that. And mm -hmm. so I just want to encourage people that he is the strongest of the strong guys. And in this culture right now, and this, this stuff that's flying, and there's fear flying, and there's all this stuff flying, look, God isn't changed. He yeah. is exactly this other attribute. He is immutable. He is not changed. He is the same God. He is the strongest of the strong. And as long as we find our refuge and our, and our strength from him, uh, and we enforce the victory that he's given, then he is the one that's going to show up, and he's going to show off. And yeah. it's only a matter of time. And we can have that. See this little look I get in my eye. It's like this little, ha ha. You know, <laughs> like, hey, I'm here, but I know. I know what the enemy doesn't know. I know who's for me. And he's about to get trounced. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's and so, so I think it's really exciting when you learn to understand God in that facet for yourself. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. amen. Uh, Vicki Hilbert said, um, me plus God equals the majority. Amen, Denine. <laughs> yes. Oh, definitely. Um, gosh, well, you know, and you're, even though you're talking about him in that way, I, I'm still seeing the lion because, yeah, you know, the lion's the king of the jungle, right? I mean, I mean, it's just like, that's part of my DNA and that's who I, I go to every time I hear how great he is and how powerful and, and all that. Um, so that's so cool. I wore this key today and it says roar on it. Nice. So that was for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it reminded me of a dream. I don't want to, I, I'll make it short. I had a dream that was pretty intense and um, it was a warning and I've actually lived through it. Um, but in the dream, there were, um, there was a neighbor walking three large black dogs. And these dogs got away from her. Now, normally, you know, most people, when they're a dog owner, they're not the ones looking scared. It's the other people that the dog's going after, right? Usually those people are like, get back over here. And they're not, well, the fear on this woman's face when those dogs got away from her 
I was in my backyard by myself and those dogs came at me and I knew I was standing on a table. It was like a patio table. And all of a sudden that thing went to the ground because I thought, well, I'm kind of safe up here, right? That thing went down to the ground. And those dogs were at me. And all I could do was close my eyes and say, Jesus. I mean, I mean, I knew that I was going to be like eaten alive kind of thing, you know. And when I, I could, and then all of a sudden, I could feel their breath. I mean, they were that close. But when I opened my eyes, this huge lion mm, standing beside me and his mane was up against me. <sighs> And I just, I opened my eyes and those dogs couldn't touch me. And then all these people were watching and their mouths were dropped open. Like they could see the lion protecting me and those dogs couldn't harm me. And so, um, you know, God speaks to me a lot in dreams and in the night season. So to me, that was, you know, those were three separate attacks coming at me viciously, but the Lord, the lion was there and they couldn't harm me. And so I woke up going, thank God for the lion. You know? <laughs> again, he comes to me so many times that way, but um, I, it just gave me that peace and assurance. It's like, you know, like the word says, the, war, the weapons will be formed, but they can't prosper. I've even started praying like this, girls. I pray that the weapon can't even be formed in the name of Jesus, and I've got the shield about me, right? This hedge, fiery hedge of protection and shield about me, that the weapons can be formed in the name of Jesus. You know, I love that. The The second half of that, we, we like to quote the no weapon formed against us, but the actual, the very, really powerful part is the second half of that, I think, which is that, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the vindication of the servants of the most high. Mm. Yes. That mm. That's even beyond like, you know, the accuser of the brethren, that's who's accusing us before the throne day and night and a lot of people who deal with shame and condemnation they are getting accusation they're getting condemnation they're they're getting false lies into their ears and see the vindication of the saints of god it's the inheritance of the saints this is part of our inheritance that not only will exactly what you said the weapon no, no weapon will form will prosper but the accusation is silenced and what it's silenced by is the blood of jesus because it speaks a better word that and so I think that there's a, there's a lot to be had in that revelation that you gave, especially for our daily lives, that when we're hearing the tape that plays, when we're hearing the accusation of, of, of past things that you've repented for, things that, and even things of like, oh, you thought that thought, that's horrible. See, what the enemy does is he traps you by, by shooting over the screen of your mind and your emotions, a thought or an emotion. And they're not even yours. That's the thing. He's the prince of the air for a reason. They're not even your thoughts. They're not even your emotions. They, but they have to be taken captive. That's what we're told in 1 Corinthians. You have to take captive every thought, right? Well, this is why. Because if we agree with the thought, we empower it. But the enemy comes and accuses you for having a thought that you did not have. And this is what I want to say. There is freedom based on that scripture that you said. For so many people, those thoughts, they're not your thoughts. Those emotions, they're not your emotions. If you're a son and daughter of the living God, they are not a, your new man. You take them captive, you bind them, you put them under the blood of Jesus, and you cut them off. And you say, that is not me. That is not my thought. And do not agree with it. And see then, that weapon that was formed to try to get into there as a stronghold, it is cut off completely, and it will not prosper against you. So That's there it. you go. <laughs> wow. Amen. That's awesome. <laughs> you just can't fight thoughts with thoughts. That's the deal. You can't fight your thoughts with your thoughts. You fight them by declaring the word of the Lord because yeah. it's the actual inheritance of God for the saints to declare it and overcome by the word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb. And the other part is that we didn't love our lives unto death, which is actually a soul. The, the life the word life there is the word suke, which is soul and mind. We didn't love our minds and our thoughts and our desires more than God. So if you're in that place of surrender, hey, you've got authority. And the Lord wants you to know that those lies of the enemy, they are breaking off of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. And everything is connected. Like, that's why in his word, he talks about the Lord with your whole soul, your heart, and your mind. Because all those things play in together. It's true. It's good. I think so, when, um, was there more, Trista? 
Uh, no. <laughs> okay, I wanted to make sure I wasn't cutting you off. Cool. That's I agree that that's all. It all works together, integrated, and. Um, Deneen, when you were saying that, so I love that what you guys just said, like talk about sparking off each other, like Cheryl saying, no weapon that's forming against you will prosper. And then Deneen pipes in with this a spirit of accusation, condemnation. And then um, the, one of the things I hate about the enemy is some of his um, tactics that he uses. And when he says, when he talks about accusation and condemnation, Sometimes he doesn't say, look at you, look at what you did. He uses the word I or me or my as though it's your own voice. Look what I did. Look what I can't do. Look, and then you're, he's, you're accusing yourself. And right. then I think about um, forgiving other people. And I remember um, when I was, I have sometimes had a hard time forgiving other people. And I know as a Christian that Jesus died on the cross to forgive my sins. And then there's redemption and the power of the blood. And I know that I'm completely forgiven. But in the moment, sometimes I have a hard time forgiving other people. When people are really hurtful to me and really hurting my heart, that's hard to forgive them. And so I just kind of ask uh, Jesus, what do I do? How do I like, I don't, I'm like, I'm crushed here. This thing this person did to me. It was so, so hurtful. And so he gave me this vision. Jesus is, is, uh, is my track coach. And he's standing at the side of, a, of a, and I'm, I'm envisioning that he's standing at the side of the track and he's timing me. How fast can I forgive once I've been offended? Right. And so there I am. And I'm like, oh, okay, this person offended me. I could, I could forgive them in six weeks. <laughs> it would take me a really long time to let go of the offense. And then as you began to know the word better and build a relationship, we're talking about the relationship with a loving God. I began to get it shorter, maybe down to one week. And I worked and worked you know, on my own divide, you know, to try to learn how to forgive. Then I got it down to a few days and then I got it down to a day and I looked up and I said, Hey coach, how am I doing? That only took me a day to forgive and I'm getting shorter. And he's like shaking his head. Then I'm still working at forgive. And finally I came up to him and every time I'd asked him, and was I fast enough? He just shook his head like this. And I said, what's up? I'm getting faster. And he said, and I'll never forget this. I want you to be so filled with my presence that you're not offended in the first place. I want you to live in a place where you are unoffendable. And that's what I just sort of feel like one of his attributes are that he loves us no matter what. And he fills us. He lives inside of us. And that love, we have the opportunity to live in that place of being unoffendable. And if I'm offended, I need to go back to the cross and say, I take that for myself. I appropriate that. That belongs to me. And if this is for you, by the way, you can appropriate it. By the way, permission granted, if you're hearing a word that's spoken, a story that belongs to somebody else, or a story that's told by somebody else, you can ask the Holy Spirit, is that for me too? If you hear a scripture verse, is that for me too? You get to ask the Holy Spirit. And he says, yes, you get to make that your own. You get to appropriate it. And so I just really feel like right now, I just want to give an impartation of the presence of the living God. Right mm -hmm. now, you are filled with his presence. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. There's nothing that can happen to you or nothing, no choice you could make, nothing you could say or do that will make him go away. He's always there with you. And even in the moments when you're not pursuing him, guess what? He's pursuing you. Amen. So filled with his presence that nothing can touch that. And that fullness and that resonance that's from him is a forever thing. Mm. Thank you. That's so good. Um, I was trying to find the scripture. I know it's in Romans 8. Nothing can separate. Isn't that where it's at? Nothing can separate. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I can't find it. I'm sorry. <laughs> But the word says, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. Nothing. And that's the beauty of who he is. Amen. Well, we've got a few more minutes. I don't know if we have time to go into one more uh, attribute. But I think so. 
We have one time for one more. <laughs> do you have one in mind? Because I do if you don't. Uh, yeah, I think we should talk about God being our peace. I, I actually feel that that's a really important important one in this season and time. Um, yes. God is our peace. In yes. fact, I like to say peace isn't emotion. Peace is a person. Just like truth isn't an, just a fact. Truth is a person and it's the person of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, he is our living peace. And one of my favorite verses is that his, um, his peace, it transcends our understanding. But the other side of the other verse is that it guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And mm -hmm. I think that that's really Im important in this time to understand that his peace is where we are, where we come into a place in his peace, where we're solidified in this security in our mind. Um, and our understanding, which which uh, isn't going to waver any longer, isn't going to be bounced around by circumstances, by the winds and the waves, and also isn't alarmed by the winds and the waves, and isn't um, isn't uh, we are not then um, left to uh, react to the winds and the waves. In fact, instead we respond according to the peace of the Lord. And um, I just, I love his peace. His peace has been a marker on my life. It's a marker of his leading in my life. It's part of the way that I know how to walk many times um, is following where his peace is. And peace isn't, for me anyways, peace isn't um, the absence of, of turmoil around me. Peace is just when I look at him and I, and I can feel that confidence in where he's going, I step towards him. And it brings, does that make sense? It, it brings forth this place, this action in me where I have a confidence of stepping regardless of what's happening. And I believe that oftentimes we take our peace or take ourselves out of his peace through our mind. Um, and right now in the climate of COVID, in the climate of world and nation nations that are being disrupted and things that are happening, Fear is trying to take a hold, and you cannot have peace if you are entertaining fear. Um, Jesus, when he's present, fear is not there. It's cast out because his perfect love casts out all fear. Mm -hmm. And so it's not, not just fear. I'm not talking about just like little human emotion fear, because we all have a, 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 a human emotion of fear, but then there's a spirit of fear, and those are two different things. Fear can be stirred up, and we can have a little bit of emotional kind of healthy tension fear if you know what i'm saying but then there's a spirit of fear which is a demonic spirit that is perpetrated with uh, on people's on mindsets on emotions and and that's what we're seeing active and present right now in some of the situations that are in the nations and some of the situations that we're dealing with in america and i think right now the lord is challenging us to be in his perfect peace so much that we're not reacting, but that we're responding according to the leading of the Lord. And I think that that's, that's what our call is to do. And we can't be so enemy focused or enemy conscious that we miss where God is in the middle of it. And I think that that is the temptation right now, especially on social media. I mean, mm -hmm. especially on some of these things where we have instant access to negative information the cycles are all about the storms. The cycles all pronounce how great the storms, the giants and the, the things are, but we have to be men and women of a different spirit. We have to be men and women of the peace of the Lord mm -hmm. and allow him to be so present in us that he's coming through us. Does that make sense? Yes, that is so good. Um, well, and it's the opposite of anxiety and fear. Right? Yeah. You know, you don't have peace when you're full of anxiety, you know, it's, it's missing. Um, Doris Bedsell said, he is the Prince of Peace. To be in relationship with him is to have his peace. When we have this peace, we can give his peace and speak to the wind and waves and to be still, peace and be still. Amen. Um, you know, I think this is probably a good way to end because we're almost up to the top of the hour. Um, I think... I, I would like, I think I would like you to pray into that, Danine. And if somebody wants to add on to that, we, we can do it. Um, but I think, because um, she had mentioned earlier when we were talking about no weapon form to pray that over our nation. I just think it would be a good way to end today to um, pray peace over this nation. You know, that's what we need. <laughs>
We need the Prince of Peace to show up big time in our nation. Well, across the world, honestly, right now. I mean, it's, it's all over. But um, Deneen, would you like to start, start us out on that? And, and, you know, Lynn or Trista, whoever wants to add on to that? Sure. So God, we just thank you, Lord, that you are our peace. You are our peace that transcends all understanding. It transcends our um, ability, our logic, all of those things, because we trust in you. We, you are our peace that brings forth hope, that brings forth um, just a, um, a stability and a confidence, Lord. And I thank you, God, that you are moving in this time and season. And I pray for every heart that's watching and every heart that is, um, every ear that's listening, God, that your word would come and it would be like a, like a, a, a new revelation, opening the eyes of their understanding and the eyes of their hearts, enlightening them to understand that you are the perfect peace that we need in this time. The world's peace won't do. It's your peace that carries the fullness of you. It carries your power and authority. It carries your, um, your comfort. It carries your strength. And so, Lord, we just look to you. We set our gaze on you, Jesus, um, the author and the finisher of our faith. God, we just ask that you would be so magnified in our vision right now that you would be so um that you would be so magnified in um everything that we are focused on right now i, I thank you god that in the midst of the storm you are walking on the water and lord yes. the invitation is for us to walk with you on the water holding your hand and walking towards you on the horizon as the sure thing of our destiny and our future and our hope and it is so good so god i speak that over every person in jesus name yes, Yes, Lord. And I just want to add to that, Lord, I just thank you for the increase of angelic activity, Lord God, watching and protecting over all of us, Lord God, and, and those that are watching and listening right now. And Lord, I just thank you that even as the thought of anxiety or a thought of stress would come up um, regarding what's going on right now, Lord, I just pray that your a supernatural peace would come over them, Lord God, that that thought couldn't even transpire, God that your peace would just come and, and replace that anxiety and that fear. We just thank you, God, that you are in control and you are the God that's, that is above every God. There are no other gods. We just thank you, Lord God, that you are all powerful, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, and you are very aware of what this world is going through right now. We thank you for that peace that's transcending even mm -hmm. now, God. we just thank you lord god we thank you lord i i thank you right now in advance for stories and praise reports that we're going to hear of people that this has happened to lord god because our prayers are like arrows they go forth lord god they hit the mark and we know that that there is power in them and so we just thank you lord god as heaven backs this up lord that there will be praise reports of people saying you know I, normally what would have upset me just instantly this peace came mm -hmm. and we just thank you for an increase of that peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. And Lord, we just thank you for people that have uh, been listening and maybe they're experiencing things going on in their bodies, Lord, and they need healing. Lord, I just thank you that as they have tuned in and they have heard this word, Lord, that they're greatly encouraged they're encouraged in knowing that you love them and that you care for them, God, and you care about their situations and that you are their provider and their source. And, and as we talked about peace, you're, you're their joy. Uh, you are their strength, their restoration, their redeemer, God. And, and Lord, I just thank you that their eyes are pointed towards you, God. And thank you that they're in faith, that you are who you say you are, God. And you are so faithful. And, and we just thank you for healing over their bodies, he, uh, eyes uh, being healed, Lord, and tumors dropping off and cancer and, and whatever it may be, the needs that they have, God, you are here to meet them right now where they're at. And we just thank you, God, for testimonies. We thank you that people will be coming forward and sharing what you have done for them, Lord. And we just thank you, Jesus, for a confidence in knowing uh, who they are in you, God, and that uh, just as Deneen shared, you see them, 
and you love them, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I agree with every word that was prayed. And I just thank you that you say, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Jesus, you give us peace, not like the world gives us, but like you give us. And you're just whispering right now to all of us and the viewers, everything's going to be okay. And we're just trusting that. We're just speaking it right back to you. Everything's going to be okay. Yes. I just speak to people who have illness, including a virus, maybe even COVID-19. You know what? Everything's going to be okay. In this place and any time that you might have had a loss, but that you're grieving something right now, right now, that's still quiet presence and that still quiet voice is with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You're not going through this alone. You're doing it with him. He's a good God filled with the peace mm -hmm. that surpasses all understanding. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Your scripture, I feel led to share it really quick. It was Romans 8, verse 38 through, uh, and 39. Uh, do you want me to read it or do you want to read it? Because I feel like we don't have time, unfortunately. But um, read, okay. read that passage again and encourage people to read that later. Right. So Romans 8, verse 38 and 39. So read it. It will bless you. Yes. Perfect. Thank you, ladies, so much. This has been so fun. And thank you to all of you that were watching today. We're definitely going to do this again. I am, there's a lot of uh, attributes of God, but I don't know if it'll be the next one we do or not, but we will definitely be doing this again. So bless you all, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. For